Welcome back to another weekend of G Wiz Weekends. I'm Emerald Fox. I'm Lynette Zhang. For those of you who are new to our channel and our show, each week I'm going to be pulling a social media post regarding the current economy and asking Lynette my questions so she can share her opinions, her invaluable insights. Um, so without further ado, we'll go ahead and dive right in. Yep. Ready. This week's post okay. is from Financial Times. Okay. It says, HSBC quarterly profits tumbled by 80% after a $3 billion charge on the value of its stake in a Chinese bank. H the caption goes on to highlight that HSBC made $3.4 billion in provisions to cover expected credit losses for the full year and said $1 billion of this was owing to its exposure to commercial property in mainland China. So the full article also states that the CEO of HSBC mm -hmm. is, you know, it was just a technical error in this in this trade and so he still has full confidence in the chinese economy of course he <laughs> does so i just you know to me i'm like how could he possibly still have all of that confidence in the chinese economy after such a large charge on that investment when you know there's still persistent deflation and the ongoing real estate crisis in china so what are your thoughts on that right and let's expand that to okay. globally because a lot of banks have been setting aside money for losses mm -hmm. because it's not just the real estate but it's also the debt wall that's looming and all of this debt that needs to be converted into new debt but we we are watching basically the Chinese economy kind of implode, right? Uh, real estate was such a key feature. And as long as the government could support it and add more debt and debt on top of debt, and they have a different product structure in China than we do here, but the whole world is really watching. You have to understand that a lot of the jobs of somebody that's the head of HSBC or the Federal Reserve or a government official or any of those guys um, their job is really more about being cheerleaders. If they admitted this, then I don't know what their stock did on that news, but my guess is it would have done a tankaruski, right? It mm -hmm. would have dropped. And they're trying to keep the stock market propped up. Okay. So I didn't read that particular article, but I certainly know how this system works. And they need the public, whether it's the U.S. public, the European public, the Chinese public, they need the public to retain the confidence so that they keep their wealth in these markets and make it easier to transfer. But I mean, China, China's an interesting test case because they were on the one hand, they were showing the whole world how to control their population, but now everything is kind of shifting and the public came together in community. And so China, the PBOC, the Chinese Central Bank, as well as the Chinese government have shifted some rules. And recently, when a company like HSBC, which is not a China-based company, mm -hmm. but when China-based uh, or outside of China-based companies, they want to do business in China, well, they've been pulling back because of all of the, the rules associated with doing business in China, like if you're doing business in China, you have to have a representative of the government that sits on the board oh, wow. so that they know everything that you're doing. And, yeah. you know, of course, we allowed a lot of that intellectual property loss in. It's always closing the barn door afterwards because certainly you could not see, you know, China stealing proprietary information from out corporations that aren't inside there. So I would say a lot of that is about keeping people confident in the company, in the structure, in investments, but we are seeing a lot of breakdown elsewhere and signs elsewhere. Right. So I would have to look at the stock of H H SBC, but my bet is, is that when they took that charge off, the stock probably did tank tank right right i just had another thought about you know the commercial real estate crisis mm -hmm. in china in general and <laughs> you know starting off with COVID and everyone you know going back home to work from home and i don't know necessarily too much about the situation in china on that 
Um, but it's happening everywhere. And, you know, is that also, I mean, that's really the commercial, the commercial real, real, estate. Commercial real estate. Yes, that's that's a global issue, right. not just in China. Right. But um, China, the Chinese population holds most of their wealth in real estate. So it's even bigger uh, and more important there than it is here. But globally, real estate is a huge part of the global GDP. Um, and the problem with what's happening, it, and it's not just in the commercial property in China, it's also in the residential real estate in China because they were funding buildings that were being built even in the middle of nowhere with nobody to actually move in, but selling these units. Oh, wow. Right. Um, yeah, I think I could be off on this a little bit, but 78% of Chinese wealth is held in real estate. So the public really counts on that increase. Right. To your point uh, with what happened during COVID, mm -hmm. right, and the shutdown, China went more extreme than the rest of the world and kept their population locked down a lot longer than everybody else right. did. So, and I, you know, look, I can't prove this. So this is just my opinion. I did look at a lot of the information um, that's available on the Wuhan lab. And, and I'm going to digress a little bit because you prepared a piece. And when you went in to research that piece, you found all of this other stuff that you had no idea existed, right? And that, that got you like really excited. Yeah, absolutely. Now, welcome to my world. <laughs> because that, that's a constant thing. If you don't, you don't know what you don't know that you need to know. Right. So whether it, in China, whether it's residential real estate or it's commercial real estate, they're both in deep trouble because of the massive overbuilding and the debt level and the layers of debt that have been put on all of this construction. And I, I don't really see... I mean, I see the opportunity unfolding, but globally, real estate is severely overvalued, right? Because they print money and it makes the real estate look like it's going up and they, they take on debt. And, and you know, and, and in China, too, a lot of that is funded by tax dollars, right? Okay. So it makes it look like it's going up. And that's what the public got used to, that nominal increase. Well, now it's reversing and they're not happy because... They prepay a lot of it. They take on debt way before they're going to live in the property. And they and the the building companies use that money that people put down or buy their houses with to build more, not to build what they're paying for. Right. Right. Okay. So there are, is a lot right across the board with property. Uh, yeah, we're in for a major global correction in, pro in the property markets, wow. as we are in the currency market. Right. Right? Absolutely. I would love to, I'm going to have to look into the commercial rate, uh, commercial real estate, excuse me, what's going on with that, because there's a lot going on lot. everywhere. And I think that we could have an, in, a more in-depth conversation about it. I think Let's there's do that. so much. So I'm going to I'm just fascinated and I'm learning and it's fun, especially with all of you. So I think that we're going to have to grab another piece about that. A hundred percent. I mean, early in my career, I would have people say to me, aren't you going to run out of things to talk about? <laughs> I was like, <"I'd> never, <laughs> never, never. Too much. I, I really do talk about the same things over and over and over. It's just their evolution and where they are. And the other point is that is there's so many different aspects Right. And you can talk about on the same topic. And then this is how you become an expert. Mm -hmm. See, you've caught the bug, which I love. <laughs> I'm loving it. It's, it's great. Great yep. information. And with so many people, I mean, they, they really do use real estate as a great investment. It's, so they think it's, they, yeah, that, they, that's trained. the mentality. That, that is the mentality. And it doesn't matter whether it's China or the U.S. Exactly. or anywhere else in the world, Sweden, Switzerland, I mean, take your pick. It doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's it's called nudging, right? Where perception management, they want you to think a certain way because as long as you think that way, then you move in that direction that supports their goals. I'm thinking you should think for yourself 
what's really going to work for you and make sure that you put your real goals first. What are your goals? And then whatever you do to support that. Um, I just, it, the, this piece is, yeah, because this is Sunday? Sunday. Okay. So yesterday, mm -hmm. we just published a piece on gold and real estate. And we took a little tour around the world. Mm -hmm. Mortgages, the risks that that real estate runs. It's it's taxes, it's immovable property taxes, it's mortgage problems. It's for those people, to your point, that are counting on real estate for their income, right? There's capping rent. There's, uh, there are, I think there were five different things that I talked about in there. And you can plan and you can overcome all of this as long as you understand what's happening, what's likely to happen, and then you can position into something that holds your purchasing power like gold. So you can pay those property taxes. You can pay off those mortgage. You can supplement the loss of income. You know, I mean, you can do it. And that's just historically proven that it's time to get to safety because real estate is targeted for inflation because that's what people look at. Oh, look, real estate always goes up. Well, guess what? In nominal terms, in terms of the dollar when it goes up, don't you pay higher property taxes on Exactly. It? Can you put that property on your back and carry it away? Nope. You can. Right? So, owner's insurance goes up. I mean, everything. All Exactly. And if you're in an HOA, which I am not in. Are you in an I HOA? Not, no. That's good. That's yeah. good. Uh, you can ask your mom. You know, <laughs> ask Megan. Some of you guys remember Megan when she was used to work for me, my daughter. They're in an HOA. Those prices go up. Sure and there's not a darn thing that you can really do about it. I would not be in an HOA. Mm -mm. But there are places where you have virtually no choice. Like Flagstaff, pretty much almost everything is an HOA. Oh, really? And hold yeah. water. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So, you I mean, these are things you have to be conscious of if you're paying attention like we're paying attention. Exactly. But there's always a workaround. So where they're accumulating HSBC cat is accumulating cash to to handle that issue. Gold is a better choice because even dollars. I don't care what currency you're looking at. Everybody's dealing with what they call high inflation, which is really currency depreciation. Right? Is the house really worth that much more money, or is the currency worth that much less? It's a great point. Uh, now moving on, I want to jump into one of our viewers' questions. Okay. Now remember, if you want your question answered, please reach out and send us your questions to questions at lynettezang.com. We're going to be going through a lot more of those in the podcast. Uh -huh. So make sure to send those in. Uh, we're having a bunch of fun and we're going to continue to answer all those questions. There's all questions asked. We're, we're bringing them to Lynette. So yeah, I'll do my best. <laughs> make sure to send those in. But for today's question, so this question is from David. Okay. He says, greetings, Lynette. Congratulations on the new YouTube. Thank you. When, what can I do to secure community that's needed around me? Currently, it's a standard residential area with no real room to grow food and livestock isn't allowed. I'm one third in gold and silver. Do you recommend a greater percentage like all in? How can my family come out ahead during this transi transition and unsure times? The government is totally unreliable. I believe only the well-prepared have a chance. Thank you. I would agree with you. And this is the importance of community, right? Because I started building this urban farm not in, you know, where I didn't have the limitations. I mean, there's some because it's a historic district, right? But, you know, I put in the gardens all across the property. Now, what I will say that you may think that there's no room to grow food, but there are aquaponic towers. There are all different ways to secure your food source. There's long storage food. So I don't know how big the property is. I don't know any of those things, but I know that Chef Jason is always showing us different methods to store food for longer term. Mm -hmm. And also I know that Morgan is showing you ways through aquaponics and and different there's a different footprint you don't need i mean i only have an i only have a half an acre here mm -hmm. right? right but 
again, I know I'm not in a homeowners association, so I had the ability to plant out my entire yard in food. Right. Okay. But not everybody can do that. So stay tuned. We will be doing more things with aquaponics. I mean, if you if you have room for a standard wire shelf, right, you can grow food on that wire shelf. If you have room for a little tower, we're going to be doing some things up north, especially when they're growing up. So, uh, but that is the importance of community. Get out and meet your neighbors. How many neighbors do you know or do you not know? Knock on the door and say, hello. I wouldn't be going in and I believe this because they're going to go, oh my God, this person is, (laughs) you know, probably a loon. But my neighbors all know that if they're walking by and they see a zucchini, they can pick a zucchini. They can pick a pomegranate. So, If you can develop community where you are and everybody does a little something different, then you can come together and share all of those gifts and also farmer's markets. Absolutely. Meet your local growers. Yeah. Meet your local food purveyors. Go out. Give them a day of your labor. Create that relationship so that when push comes to shove, you're the one that's going to get the food. Right. Right. And then share. I mean, one thing I learned a long time ago, and I have to figure out because I, you know, I've lived a long time and and I cannot say that my life was always easy. It, it definitely wasn't. And I want to share those, share those, life those experiences, um, but I haven't quite figured out where they fit yet. But stay tuned. We'll figure it out because I think that it's really important for people to know that wherever you are, even if you're at the bottom, right, there is a way to climb back out. But you need people. Right. You need community. That support. We, you know, we do. So in that environment, we're going to be doing a lot more um, work on foraging, how you can find food in the city that people don't realize is food, you know, huge to the long storage kind of food to what can you do in a tiny space, you know, because food and water, you can't live without those. Right. Yeah. So we got to come together in community and share the gifts that we've been given, which is what we do on our channel. Absolutely. So David, make sure you stay tuned. I know Morgan's got a lot of good content for you on that regard, uh, as well as Jason's, our uh, the chef here. He's going to be coming with some great content as well. So stay tuned. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to be going up to the bug out this weekend mm-hmm. and filming some content with Angus right there. So well, we'll get that content somehow. <laughs> <laughs> well, everyone, thank you so much. That's it for this weekend's She Was Weekends. If you like this episode, make sure to give us a thumbs up and make sure to leave a comment below always uh, subscribe to the channel and please share, share, share with yeah, all really your important. friends and family. We want to be able to help as many people as possible. Mm-hmm. And until next time, please be safe out there. Bye-bye. Bye now.